In this project, we'll be creating this Van Gogh inspired painting. This is not a how to paint the same as Van Gogh. It is a project loosely based on his style and to explore his technique of patterns just for a bit of fun. But we will briefly touch on some of his techniques and the materials he would have used. So let's get into it. For this project, we'll be using a 50 by 60 centimeter double thick canvas. A number six palette knife a professional series number 16 angle brush and a tear off paper palette. For paints, we'll be using the 24 piece acrylic color paint set. We'll also need some water, paper towels and a pencil. We've supplied an outline and an image of our finished artwork. As we said, the canvas we are using is a 50 by 60 centimetre canvas, although most of the work by Van Gogh was created on a size 30 canvas, which in today's measurements was 65 by 92 centimetres. The first step is to draw up the rough positioning of each tree with a HB pencil. Although this is quite simple, some thought needs to be given to where the tree lies compositionally and to make the distant trees smaller to suggest perspective. Lay all the branches in as well, as they will provide us with an idea of where to lay our leaves when it comes to that stage. Once the trees are drawn in, we can lay black over the drawn trees with that angle brush. Van Gogh used flat brushes and rounds, but the predominant brush style he used was a filbert. This was the favoured brush used by the Impressionists before him, as it creates a round beginning to a stroke. Because he was using oil paint with very little medium, his paint would have been very stiff, so hog bristle brushes were used, which have very robust hairs. Because we are using acrylic paint, a softer Taclon brush is better suited. The trees can be refined at this point, and any extra detail can be laid in. For the branches, the brush can be used on its edge. The angle brush is a very versatile brush that can achieve a wide variety of strokes. We know that Van Gogh laid in the compositional elements first, usually in a darker colour, as he kept a lot of the initial line work in the finished work. Sort of like an outline. This was quite unique to his style. Once that black is dry, we can lay in some cobalt blue and titanium into the background. A palette knife is used to get the paint on quickly so that it can be consistently spread across the canvas with a damp rag while it's still wet, as acrylic paint dries very quickly. Of course, Van Gogh would have used oil paints as acrylic paint was not invented for another 60 years after his death. Use strokes in a circular motion from a central point in the sky. Van Gogh tinted his canvas prior to painting, usually with ground colours, warm pink or an off-white. And in some paintings, he let the tint show through. The foreground is laid in with raw sienna and lemon yellow, with titanium white thinly applied with a damp towel. Take this colour over the trees and into the blue of the sky. It's okay to cover the trees with this thin coat as we'll be able to see the dark tone beneath this light tint and we will relay in more colour over the trees at a later stage. So once you're finished, let this dry and we can start on the trees. Squeeze out some medium yellow, sap green, phthalo blue and brilliant red. With these tones, we can create a light green from medium yellow and sap green an olive green from sap green and a touch of brilliant red, and a dark green from phthalo blue and sap green, as well as the straight sap green. This will give us four green tones to use for our leaves. Lay the leaves in individually with the angle brush on its side. Create the leaves emitting out from the branches. Build the leaves up and don't clean the brush between using the different greens. This way, the mixing of tones will add more interest and create even more differing green tones. Keep the circular flow of the painting in mind as the leaves are laid in. 
Creating a painting in this style obviously takes a little time. So try to think of it as a mindful exercise as you build up the colour on the painting. Van Gogh took days and days to create his paintings, standing in a field under the hot sun. In his letter to his brother Theo, he talked of having terrible headaches at the end of each long painting session. Some speculate this was a sign of heat stroke. Once the leaves are all in, we can start work on the foreground. So we squeeze out some raw sienna, titanium white and some burnt umber and begin by laying strokes over the ground. The general idea here with regards to the position of the strokes is to lay the strokes at a more horizontal angle and lay up strokes next to one another at a slightly different angle so they have a wavy look to them. Van Gogh used this technique to suggest the movement of long grass blowing in the wind. The sun is directly above our trees, so there will be shadows cast from the trees. Refer to an image of the finished painting and roughly suggest the shadow areas by laying in the strokes at a similar angle, but use the green tones that were used in the trees. As well as these greens, I create a lighter pastel green by mixing in some titanium white and lay strokes into the lighter areas too. Once the foreground is all in, the trees are repainted in with a mix of phthalo blue lightened with a touch of titanium white. When this tone is laid into the trees, leave some of the black show on the edge of the trees like an outline. Van Gogh used bold outlines to suggest form in lots of his paintings. Use straight phthalo for any areas of shadow and phthalo mixed with titanium white for areas of highlight like on the top of the branches. The sky can be created next, so we squeeze out some titanium white, medium yellow, monasteral green, cerulean, deep cyan and phthalo blue. Begin by laying in yellow strokes into the middle of the sky. Continue to lay in the yellow strokes in a circular shape around those first strokes, keeping the flow around the strokes just laid down. To get a stroke, the brush tip can be dipped into the paint and the flat tip can be pressed onto the canvas. Van Gogh used this sun and sky circular pattern in many of his paintings. I found this actual size detail of the sun in his Road with Cypress Star painting. His strokes are a lot more tactile, immediate and rough. Part of the reason for this is oil paint is a lot more sticky.
Although the tones we are using are approximately similar to the tones Van Gogh used, they are different as he used a very limited palette consisting of eight colours. Red Lake, Vermilion, Cadmium Yellow, Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue, Cobalt Violet, Emerald Green, Viridian and White. With these colours he mixed every colour he needed. After the yellow we lay in Monastral Green tinted with Titanium White, then straight Titanium followed by Cerulean, tinted with white, then Deep Cyan followed by Phthalo Blue, always keeping that circular pattern in mind. We hope you have enjoyed this fun lesson and thanks for watching. Hope you picked up something you can use with your art. While you're here, take a look around the Create section on our website and uncover a whole heap of free stuff, from free projects, handy tips and tricks and techniques to keep you busy. Otherwise, have fun, keep creating and we'll see you on the next one.